Just go to your childhood for once and imagine a very lazy Sunday where your dad just stands up and decides that today I'm going to prepare the lunch and I will make something which you would have never tasted before. And the kids gets excited, but the mother gets nervous, the mom gets nervous because now my mom or your mom has to make sure that everything is organized because she keeps the kitchen organized, but she knows the moment dad enters, he's going to toss and spin everything around and make something which no one has ever seen. The mom comes and say, okay, hold on. If you want to cook something, wait for a while. Let me cut everything. Let me store everything properly. And then you can come in and do your experiments, but don't come into the kitchen just now. Okay. I let me, let let me make everything ready because the moment you start doing everything the kitchen will be all messed up and the dad used to enter and then mix multiple things multiple ingredients while a mom used to make similar kind of recipes he comes up with something very new never ever tasted maybe adding maggi uh, with rice or something like that never ever you have seen and dad used to prepare something very very special so why i'm saying all this because today the topic which we are discussing is like that it is about discussing two such platforms which which are so closely uh, intertwined yet so different from each other and while we might see snowflake and databricks as very fierce competitors in the world of modern data platforms and modern data engineering let's analyze if they're actually competitive competitors or actually friends. So in this video, we'll gonna understand the nuances of what is a snowflake, what is a Databricks. And by the end of this video, you will exactly know the differences between the two uh, products, a bit of history. The most important thing is what kind of careers we can target or what kind of business use cases we can target for both of these products. So without further ado, let's get started. So friends, let's carry on from our real life analogy. So in this case, snowflake acts as your mobile Databricks as your dad. Moms are precise, moms are structured, moms are disciplined, whereas dads are more experimental, adventurous, playing with new things, okay? And that's what the basic difference between Snowflake and Databricks is. So just to uh, go to a bit of history, it was founded by Oracle Ingenious and Oracle traditionally has been a SQL based uh, data platform or a data storage platform. And they founded Snowflake because they felt that the traditional data warehouses have a lot of problem because the data warehouses tend to get really heavy over the time and then it used to you know get performance issues a lot so the basic foundation of building snowflake was to separate storage from compute so regardless of whatever storage you are having your compute power will always be derived from somewhere else i've made a detailed video on snowflake so you can watch out for exact architectural nuances of snowflake so coming to databricks databricks was founded in 2013 by the creators of apache spark apache spark came in 2010 which was a big data processing platform based on hadoop framework so hadoop then apache spark came in 2010 but because apache spark was very complex to maintain and it was not very easy to understand infrastructural challenges of Apache Spark. You need to spin up the Spark cluster, maintain Spark cluster, which was too much of a work. So to solve these challenges, the creators of Apache Spark at UC Berkeley came up with Databricks. So Databricks provided that layer on top of Apache Spark where you could, you know, offload all those processing complexities at the back end and you can just leverage the power of Apache Spark framework. And then they further added concepts like Delta Lake, MLOps, all those kind of uh, paradigms and bouquet of services started coming on to Databricks. So Databricks in 2013, Snowflake came in 2012. So what was their purpose? So their purpose was to change how traditional data warehouses worked, which I have already explained. But here the aim was different. It was building a unified big data processing platform where anyone could come in and start processing big data. And that's why it was always focused towards running ML models, coming up with uh, ML use cases, real time analytics, big data processing. It was more developer driven. So all these developers thought that okay how we can get into the world of data and started processing this data to create new machine learning models and that's where the power of Apache Spark combined with Databricks came into picture. The focus for Snowflake has already been always been data warehousing, analytics, BI. It is very very aligned with the background where I come from. So business intelligence, all these traditional analytical requirements which we have can be fulfilled by Snowflake. But the difference is now Snowflake is you know you can uh, share your data across 
across cloud it can be connected to AWS, Azure, GCP. You have your storage is different. Your compute power is different. The amount of data you can process significantly increased. So all those things makes it a very good platform if you are coming from a SQL developer kind of a background where you have run your life select all from employee table. If that's you, Snowflake is for you. Okay. Here the focus was big data because it came from Hadoop and MapReduce concept and framework, AI, ML, data science, all these kind of use cases where you needed the knowledge of Python, where you needed to understand how NumPy works, how Panda works, all these kind of things where uh, you needed. Databricks was a better platform in that sense. Now, what has happened over the period of time is both these platforms are kind of providing more and more functionality. So you will see that there would be some overlap. So there would be things which would be possible in Snowflake and there would be things which are possible in data bricks and vice versa but we are talking about the basic differences here okay so as i said it is sql heavy select all so this is sql heavy here it is python heavy okay so people who want to import panda libraries okay numpy using uh, you know different uh, libraries in python for data processing all this is you know primarily driven in data bricks the data format structured semi structured that's where snowflake is very good here you have all data formats including unstructured so you can store videos you can store uh, images now the counter question would be can we do it in snowflake yes but it is not very straightforward so the difference is here it comes naturally because when you build your ml models it could be based on anything it could be based on sentiment analysis it could be based on your twitter feeds it could be based on all the youtube videos a person is watching for the last 24 hours it could be anything so when it comes to machine learning unstructured data is very very important that's why it is naturally built to process all kinds of data format from the use case perspective uh, it is very easy to understand it's beginner friendly snowflake is beginner friendly if you come from SQL developer background even if you are a business user you will find snowflake very intuitive because of the simple fact that you have come from the world where you have done maintain data in Excel then you maintain data in Oracle then you maintain data in traditional data warehousing platforms used Informatica as ETL tool and then now when you come to snowflake the basic difference is the compute power so instead of doing everything everything in house now you have data warehouse as a service so yeah very good thing so snowflake is dwas data warehouse as a service so that's where it comes this is very good for programmers and the learning curve is bit advanced than snowflake because you need to have the basic understanding of how python works how scala works how java works whichever uh, programming language you wish to use here but now you also have in databricks also you have sql capability okay so it's not that you can't do anything with sql if you know sql you can use databricks but was it known for that no now does it have it yes do you have python here yes you can use but now they are bringing this but we are talking about the bedrock of where these platforms built from so let's take a use case okay because many a times uh, we get this question sir is it is snowflake better or databricks better okay the answer is is your mom better or is your dad better you know both are good right so you need your mom and your dad, you know, to come together and make something uh, very tasty and yummy for you. And where they make it, they make it on cloud. And that cloud is nothing but your kitchen. That's your kitchen. So that's where we are now combining the best of both the worlds. So it's not one is right, another is wrong, one is good, another is bad. It's the combination of both. So let's take for example, you want to understand your customer behavior better. You are Amazon and you want to understand your customer buying behavior. So Snowflake can be used to store store all your customer transactions in uh, Snowflake and then you can predict customer behavior by building new machine learning models on, on top of whatever data you have stored. So initially you can put Snowflake in your solution and 68% I, I was reading survey 68% of Fortune 500 companies uses both Snowflake and Databricks. So if you are new to this particular career, don't think that you can, you know, you should only focus on one. Try to learn both because it would be very, very strong profile you will build if you focus on both the platform from the roles perspective data analysts data engineers business intelligence developer dashboard developers who make dashboards on tableau power bi snowflake comes naturally to them wherein here it's all about data engineers data scientists machine learning engineers all these people prefer data bricks but one thing is common here so data engineers are here as well and data engineers are here as well because be it your traditional
ट्रेडिशनल ईटीएल पाइपलाइन डेटा पाइपलाइन और बीट योर पाइपलाइन सपोर्टिंग योर मशीन लर्निंग मॉडल इन बोथ द केसेज डेटा इंजीनियर इज सम वन हू वुड बी रिक्वायर्ड सो इफ यू आर ट्राइंग टू फोकस ऑन अ डेटा इंजीनियरिंग कैरियर दिस इज अ वेरी गुड अपॉर्चुनिटी टू लर्न बोथ द प्लेटफॉर्म ओके एंड आई एम वेरी सुन एंड इफ इफ नॉट लाइफ yet you will very soon find uh, a video on my channel where I, i will go into the depth of how you can build a successful data engineer career road map it will be very detailed with all the information which i know and which i have researched so wait for that maybe i'll put the link of that video in the description of this video as well so yeah these are certain differences which makes snowflake different from data bricks but that at the same time they they are not competitors or enemies they complement each other very very nicely so you have to understand which particular platform you should start your journey first with and then there are certifications so you have snow pro certification for snowflake and then you have data uh, data bricks certified developer certifications as well so think of which one suits you more one thing which snowflake provides is you can have your data shared across multiple cloud so you can have your data shared across aws azure gcp i think databricks does not have that functionality so that is very good that is that is the power of snowflake and uh, similarly databricks is very good when it comes to real time analytics your processing your iot data creating very complex etl or elt uh, workloads all those kind of cases databricks is very good and again databricks you know is a combination of multiple things so you have the concept of delta lake delta lake is nothing but the combination of standard data warehouse plus data lake there is a video which where i have talked about the difference between data warehouse data lake and data lake house so delta lake is nothing but a data lake house so basically it brings best of both the worlds so these kind of products are there in data bricks so yeah these are certain differences i know by the end of this video now you have a fair understanding of what is snowflake what is data bricks and which particular platform you should start your journey with so with that said guys i hope it was a useful video let me know if you want me to make uh, videos on this as well and uh, yeah i see you next time thank you